So chances are you found this video because you have some sort of vector problem, all right? And you might be in a math course, or maybe it's physics, or related and more applied, like something like statics, or you're trying to get ready to pass that fundamentals of engineering exam because you want to become a, a, an engineer, a licensed engineer someday. Well, regardless of what it is, what we need to do is we need to take a look at our vector. And, and a vector is simply a quantity that has a magnitude and a direction, right? This direction is referenced from some reference point or reference you know, baseline. But what we're doing here is we're gonna go ahead and, and if you forget you know, what an iHat is versus an iPod, that's okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use basic trig just to solve this. In another video, we'll look at i-hat and j-hat and unit vectors, but right now, we're just gonna take a look at basic trig. So the trig identities that we're gonna use are just sine, cosine, and tangent, and I'll put those here. Well, hopefully you learned the sine is just the opposite over the hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. And when we look at vectors, we can look at them as really kinda like right triangles, right? So when we look at this 40 kilonewtons, we can also say, well, this is kinda like, if we were to break this up, we could have some AX component that looks you know, something like this. And then if we go tip to tail, we can say, well, we have some AY component that comes back up. And you know what we can say here is this is you know AY. And what we know is A is really just like something that looks like this, AX plus a y right so if we go come over a x come up a y that's the same as this vector a right so what we want to do is we want to find these components and if you look at this this is kind of cool because what happens is this becomes a right triangle that we can work with so all that we're going to do is we're just going to apply basic trig to solve for ax and ay and we'll do the same thing for b and then we'll add them together and that's the basics of finding a result in vector so let's do that let's jump in and just say well we know that the cosine of 30 degrees equals the adjacent over hypotenuse. So if this is our 30 degree angle, the adjacent is AX over the hypotenuse A. So what that gives us is if we multiply both sides by A, we get AX equals A times cosine 30. And if we plug that in, right, we'll put in you know 40 kilonewtons here times the cosine of 30 degrees. And what we get is 34.64 kilonewtons. Okay, and we're gonna do something similar here, and now we'll say, well, let's remember, we know how to do sine, so if we take the sine of 30 degrees, the sine of 30 is like the opposite over the hypotenuse, so what is that? That's equal to a y over a. So again, what we can do is we can you know, put this out a little bit here. We get a y is equal to a times the sine of 30, and when we put the numbers in, we get 40 kilonewtons times the sine of 30, and we get this to be 20 kilonewtons. Okay, so that's, you know, these, this is, this is, these are the components of the A vector. Similarly, we can take a look here and look at this B vector, right? So the B vector is also gonna be something like, well, we have BX plus BY. Okay, and here, if we come in and take a look at components, we'll notice that this X direction is kind of in the negative direction, right? We'll also notice that this Y one also goes up. And I drew it here, but I could also just draw it tip to tail on this side and, and take a look at it here. So if we come over, we could say, well, this is going to be BX, we have BY. We have a triangle here, but you'll notice that our angles defined differently, right? So what I started to do is I started to draw um, this BX up here, this BY up here, right? So if I have my BY up on this now, let's take a look at that. Well, what's different? Well, if I, if I come here, I'm gonna draw my BX in, you know, as well here. So this is uh, BX. We can write it either way, but we have to know where this angle is. So let me move my 53 out of the way. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to just look at, well, how do we, you know, apply the cosine here, just like we did up above. So if we take the cosine of 53.13 degrees, we might be tempted to say, well, this is just going to be BX over B, but let's take a look, right? Because the adjacent uh, item here next to the adjacent component here next to the 53.13 degrees is this BY. So here we get BY over B. And you'll notice the difference. This was the X component 
here's the y component, and it all has to do with where that angle is measured from, right? But if we look back at kind of the basics of trig, we can kind of get this, where by is now going to equal b times the cosine of 53.13 degrees. What do we get? We get 50 times the cosine of 53.13 degrees, and that's gonna equal roughly uh, 30, 30 kilonewtons, okay? Uh, pretty close. All right, so next what we're gonna do is we're just gonna apply sine, and hopefully you can see that this is just gonna switch, right? So what we get instead of being uh, B, a, a, Y or B, Y, what we're gonna have is B, X over B, right? Because the opposite of this 53.13 is B, X. So B, X over B, what does that give us? Well, it gives us B, X equals, you know, B times the sine of 53.13 degrees. And when we work this out, we get 40 kilonewtons for our total here. All right, so what do we do next? Well, next what we wanna do is we wanna go back and solve this problem, right? So the problem that we started with was A plus B equals C. So let's copy that down here, right? And to, and to solve that problem, what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically come and we're gonna find our components of C first. So the way I like to do this is to write like CX and CY, but what this is gonna be is it's going to be essentially the sum of vectors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a sign convention that says anything that to the right or up is going to be positive. So if a vector is to the right, we're going to say it's positive. If a, if a component vector here is up, we're going to say it's positive, right? So this is kind of like some of the forces in the x direction, some of the forces in the y direction. But what we're going to do here is we're going to say, well, ax, that's going to the right, that's going to be positive. You know, ay, that's going up, that's going to be positive. So we have a plus ax, a plus ay. But then when we get here to bx, we notice that bx is going to the left. It's opposite our positive sign convention. We're going to say this is minus bx, right? by is going up, so that's gonna be plus by, right? And, and this makes some sense, right? bx is gonna counteract ax. They're, they're acting in opposite directions, right? So what we wanna do next is just kind of substitute values in. So we'll put our equal signs in, and let me write those values in. And once we have the values in, we're just gonna do math here. So 34.6 minus 40 is gonna get us to minus 5.36 kilonewtons. Okay, and similarly 20 plus 30, what's that get us to? Well, it's 50 kilonewtons. Okay, and these are now the components of our resultant vector. So if we draw those in, let me draw them in, right? So if I take this and draw them in, you know, CX is gonna come back here, CY is gonna come sort of like this, and our resultant vector is gonna look something along these lines, where our resultant's gonna be, you know, this is our resultant vector C, right? So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that vector C. And to get the magnitude, hopefully you remember Pythagorean's theorem, right? Because what we know is that C squared, or the magnitude of C squared, equals you know Cx squared plus Cy squared. So here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find this magnitude, kind of the absolute value um, of, of C. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use Pythagorean's theorem. So we're gonna say, well, the magnitude of C is going to equal the square root of Cx x squared plus cy squared. So when we plug those numbers in, what we end up with is a value of about 50.3 kilonewtons, okay? So that's our magnitude, but if you remember, a vector has both magnitude and direction, so we need to measure the mag or the direction of this vector c. So what we know is, I'm just gonna re-sketch this a little bit here. I'm gonna say, well, if this is our you know x-axis, our y or our x-axis and y-axis, we know this vector c goes something along these lines. And what we're gonna do is we're we're gonna measure our angle theta from the negative um, x-axis here. So this is gonna be our, our angle theta that goes from the negative x-axis, right? So if this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, our angle theta for C is gonna come here. And what that tells us is it informs us now that when we do this, we have to come back to our last trig identity. And our last trig identity here is tan, right? So the tangent, of this angle theta is e going to equal, well what, the opposite? In other words, what, what that's gonna be here is it's going to be um, the opposite of that angle CY over CX. So this is gonna equal CY over CX, and, and we can you know come down here and we can say, well the inverse tan of CY over CX is going to equal theta. And when we put that in, we get, you know, this is gonna equal the tan inverse or the inverse tan of CY, which is 
uh, 50 kilonewtons divided by 5.36 kilonewtons and these are absolute values because we're looking at the actual directions this triangle makes right and, and what we get is theta is going to equal like 83 point uh, about nine degrees okay so at the end of this what we know is the the vector c has a magnitude of 50 0.3 kilonewtons with a direction of theta of 83.9 degrees from the negative x axis. Okay, and this defines that re resultant vector. And all we did was use basic trigonometry, broke it into components, looked at you know our, our pieces here, added them together, found our resultant with Pythagorean's theorem or result in magnitude, I should say, and then use the tangent to find our angle. So that's it, that's the starting point, and we'll jump in with a couple other ways to look at this next, but you know, this is the basics of, of vectors, right? You'll see these come up in physics, you'll see them come up in statics with trusses and that sort of thing, but this is hopefully helpful to clarify some confusion and, and help with basic, basic addition of vectors. So if you have questions, you know, feel free to drop a comment, otherwise, Keep working hard, moving onward and upward.